Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to discuss the Bermuda Azores High and how it's going to affect the peak of the hurricane season. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to TropicalTibbets.com for Friday, July 19th, 2024. We have three tropical waves that we are monitoring, one near Central America, crossing over to the Pacific Basin, one moving through the Eastern Caribbean, and one that is just coming off the coast of Africa, but compared to yesterday, has lost a lot of its lackluster, thanks to a high amount of wind shear, as well as a lot of dry air that it's encountering. Here's the spin and vorticity of those three tropical waves. Not much to worry about in terms of development, at least over the next seven days. Everything should remain quiet in the Atlantic, but the question is not now, but what's going to happen during the peak of the hurricane season? And a large that part of that is going to be played and drawn out by the Bermuda Azores High. It's what steers all of our tropical storms and hurricanes when they do develop. And basically what this graph is showing is when we have a strong high pressure system, we see, typically see storms move through the Caribbean and recurve closer to land into the Gulf of Mexico. And if we have a normal high pressure, we see them recurve along the east coast of the United States. And then a weaker high pressure, we would see them curve out to sea and become fish storms, missing land completely. And reason being is because I like to use the analogy mountains and valleys. The Bermuda Azores High is a mountain, it's not allowing you to go through, and the storm has to take the path of least resistance around the Bermuda Azores High, which be through the valley between the high pressure systems that are around the globe. And currently, and recently, we've had a strong Bermuda Azores High across the Atlantic, as you can see on the GFS map today. Strong high pressure in the middle of the Atlantic, all of our tropical waves have been moving around this Bermuda Azores High through the Caribbean and either moving into the Pacific Basin or up in towards the Yucatan and the Gulf of Mexico like we saw with Beryl and all of our other tropical storms that formed Alberto and Chris. They've all moved in this general direction. And part of that has been because we've had a positive North Atlantic Oscillation or the NAO. And you can see where I have the black box on the top right of your screen. Since Barrel formed towards the end of June into July, we had a, this positive NAO. It dipped a little bit back towards neutral, but then went right back up and then has dipped again recently. And basically, this has been staying positive for the past month or so. And that's been a very strong high pressure pushing all these storms from east to west through the tropics and not allowing them to recurve out the sea uh, th that we would want to see. We would, If we want to see that happen, we need to have a negative NAO. So currently, we're going to be heading back into another strong positive NAO period for the next week or so, and then potentially could come back down to neutral. And like I said, this is showing the European and the GFS uh, models for the next 15 days. But those trade winds are uh, amplified or weakened because of the strength of that Bermuda Azores High. As you can see, the trade winds in yellow across the tropics go from Africa to the Caribbean. And those are in yellow. And when those trade winds are strong, can cause upwelling in the tropics. And upwelling off the coast of Africa cools off the sea surface temperatures. So when we saw this positive NEO kick in with a strong Bermuda Azores high, we saw the sea surface temperatures dip in the main development region of the Atlantic. So it's slightly cooler, but if you saw in the last graph, even though we got cooler, we were still at one degree above the long-term average at our lowest. And now we are creeping back up again. And what, what that means is, even though we had this period of time where we saw the temperatures, uh, the sea surface temperatures decrease, including some of these blues areas across the main development region, it's still going to be warmer than normal 
as we go further on into the peak of the hurricane season. It's just going to increase the temperature as we go forward. Now we might have one more peak of cooling off, as you can see here, in the next 46 days, where we're going to be positive until the end of July. And then in August, we look to be positive, but not as much, potentially. And then, but that's only the beginning of August. As we get towards the end of August, you can see how we're going to be dipping back into negative territory or just staying near neutral. So let's see how that plays out on the models. So here is our climate forecast system, CFS model. You can see for the month of August, the red and black arrows pointing towards a red anomaly that is stronger than normal high pressure across the main, uh, the Atlantic. And the red arrows pointing towards blue, which is stronger low pressure signals, more storms basically. And on the right side of your screen, you can see where there's more uh, storms obviously we're going to have more precipitation. This doesn't per se mean any tropical storms or hurricanes. It just shows where rainfall is going to be. But obviously, if we have favorable conditions, like a positive uh, MJO, carefully uh, coupled wave, Kelvin wave coming through, low wind shear environment, no dry air, we're going to see these tropical waves potentially become tropical storms or hurricanes dumping even more rainfall in these regions. Then we get to September, the peak of the hurricane season, and we see a little bit of a weakening in the high pressure system. Those blues are indicating more low pressure systems in the middle of the Atlantic instead of where the Bermuda Azores High would typically be, and stronger high pressure over the southeast coast of the United States which could still mean storms heading towards the western portions of the Gulf of Mexico like we've been seeing. But it also means because of the lower pressures in the middle of the Atlantic, a lot more of those storms could go into and recurve away from the ocean. Then we see in October, the return of high pressure, relatively strong in the middle of the Atlantic, but low pressure is dominant right south of it in the Eastern Caribbean and in the Gulf of Mexico. And that is indicating also more of those tropical waves, potentially tropical storms or hurricanes moving into those regions. So the Caribbean islands once more could be, and even the Gulf of Mexico could be a target of the systems in the month of August, I mean, October. So basically, again, Right now, we have a strong Bermuda Azores high, so we could see these storms continue to move through the Caribbean up into the Gulf of Mexico. As we get into September, we could see a weakening of that high pressure system, so more of the middle graph here recurving up the east coast of the United States, or hopefully, fingers crossed, curving out to sea. Uh, but October, potentially a re-strengthening of that high pressure system, bringing them once again closer to where everybody lives in the Caribbean islands or along the Gulf Coast or East Coast of the United States. In terms of actual uptick in activity, could be the end of July, beginning of August, when we see tropical development once more, when we see the, Sah the Saharan air layer dissipate, as well as decreasing in the wind shear with La Nina kicking in. And we'll see a convectively coupled Kelvin wave along with a robust uh, MJO forming over the African continent, allowing for more tropical waves to come off across the, the Atlantic and possible tropical development occurring in this circled region right here. Western portions of the main development region, Caribbean extending into the Gulf of Mexico, like we saw in the beginning of the hurricane season with Alberto, Beryl, and Chris. So we'll keep an eye on this region and any tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa and when the conditions will become favorable once more and where that Bermuda Azores High is situated so we know where they potentially could go. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you knew and like detailed weather breakdowns, 
hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you, and have a great day.